Fight through it. Fight through it. If you feel like quitting, don't do it. This is TK Coleman. You're listening to TK's Two Cents. And today's talk, today's rant is titled Fight Through It. I want to talk to you about fighting the good fight and getting on the other side of that pain and that discomfort that's holding you back from being the best possible version of yourself. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. On the other side of that temptation is a higher level of peace, power, and purpose. Fight through it. The reward is real. The great secret of discipline is this. Your appetites can be reoriented. Your taste can be transformed. All cravings are negotiable. Why do we avoid discipline? We know we have areas of our life that need to be changed. We know that there are habits we can devote ourselves to forming that will help us create more desirable outcomes. And we know this without other people preaching to us. Every single one of us is capable of uh, recognizing some area of life where we probably would have more energy or more time or more money or more friends or more freedom or fewer problems in some area that nags us. If we only started to do one thing a little bit more, a little bit more frequently or consistently, and yet we struggle to do it, why do we do it? It's that little thing called pain, right? That change requires that you engage discomfort, but it's not pain alone. There's an understanding that we have of pain. There's a story that we tell ourselves about the experience of pain that keeps us from having faith in the power of discipline. And what is that story? That story is the pain that makes your life miserable when you try to change is non-negotiable. I want you to think for a moment about a drug addict. I remember one visual example of this was in the movie Ray, where Jamie Foxx plays the story of, of Ray Charles. And you see a scene where after he decides to give up drugs, he's going through withdrawal symptoms. And it just looks so uncomfortable to watch. But you can see it in other lives. There are many people that have successfully overcome drug addictions. And one of the things they have to deal with when they're fighting that is withdrawal symptoms. This refers to biological and or psychological patterns that they have developed that make them dependent on that drug there's a certain buzz that they have become accustomed to feeling. And before you go through those withdrawal symptoms, it feels as if these cravings are part of the definition of who you are. And imagining a life where you have successfully conquered those cravings can be so difficult, so difficult to envision. And when you see people who make that commitment, they are going to overcome. They are going to kick this habit. They are going to turn over a new leaf. They go through a period of time, and for some people, it's longer than others. For some people, it's almost an entire lifetime, but with ever-increasing degrees. They go through this period of intense pain where it almost feels like they are going to die. And when you're in those kinds of moments, it just seems like, you know, what's the point of me spending an entire day in pain, having a headache, feeling frustrated and distracted the whole time for the purpose of kicking this habit when I can just go do the thing and get that release and have it off my mind after only a few minutes of doing whatever it is that I'm trying to stop doing. And it seems almost impractical to suffer through the pain of withdrawal symptoms. It seems almost impractical to suffer through the discomfort of having to kick a nagging habit because you are in a sense making the choice to have a miserable life for a day, a week, or perhaps even several months. But if you buy into a story that says that misery you're feeling is going to be the same for the rest of your life, you'll feel discouraged. What you've got to remember is that there is a version of you on the other side of that pain that discipline carries you through. The reward of resisting temptation, the, re the reward of turning over a new leaf is a very real reward because your cravings are negotiable. 
There are things today that you do not like that you can learn to like. There are things today that you can't imagine living without that you can learn to develop the kind of taste to where you are no longer craving that thing. If, for instance, you are on a sugar addict diet and you just can't imagine not eating candy bars, not drinking a bunch of sodas, not having cheesecake and snacks all the time, it might be hard to imagine a life where you can be happy eating whole foods. And if you try to make that change, you might feel a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort, but your appetites can be transformed. The magic of discipline isn't just that we get to experience the superior results of superior action. The magic of discipline is that we get to participate in a process of reinventing ourselves over time. You are not the cravings that you currently have. You are not the addictions that you have acquired. You are not the taste that you define yourself by. You are more than those things and you can transform those things over time. You can learn to like and love new things. You can learn to crave different things and you can learn to loosen the grip that your current cravings have over you. If you talk to people that work out every day, they'll tell you, that they often feel depressed and sad and empty on the inside when they don't make it to the gym and do all of these rigorous hard workouts. But it didn't start that way. At first, it felt more comfortable to keep on doing the same thing, to keep sitting on the couch and keep eating, eating snacks. And then when they went to the gym, after just maybe 20 minutes of working out, their body says, okay, no more, I'm gonna die. This isn't uncomfortable. And the misery just doesn't feel like it's worth it. But on the other side of that discipline, the body begins to change and the body begins to say, hey, this is uncomfortable to be sitting here not working out. This is uncomfortable to not be eating healthier foods. This is uncomfortable to not be studying and feeding things to my mind. This is uncomfortable to not be developing new skills and learning new things. This is uncomfortable to not be working hard after my goals. This is uncomfortable to not be creating and collaborating with people. This is uncomfortable to not be out there making friends. What's uncomfortable today can be completely different from what's uncomfortable tomorrow if you embrace the discipline and persist through the pain and refuse to accept a story that says this pain is going to feel exactly the same forever. It's not. Your cravings are negotiable. Your appetites can be transformed. Don't let the discomfort of change stop you. Fight through it. You get to be a version of you that enjoys different things. In the beginning, virtue feels like hell. As you persist and go through it, it becomes your very concept of heaven. That is a reward that is so worth fighting for. But words can't do it for you. You've got to experience it for yourself. I encourage you to give it a try. Let's go to tweet number two. But what about the people over there? You don't need to know or have an answer to everyone else's questions in order to act on what is best for you. One of my friends has a concept that he calls theoretical man. And theoretical man refers to a hypothetical person that we are capable of imagining who might not know the things that we know. The extreme exception, right? So for instance, you get in your mind that your life would probably be better if you exercised a little bit more often. And you have a gym that, that's right down the street from you. You live in a neighborhood where you're safe to walk and run around. You have access to all the things you need to get started. But you think about some theoretical person who doesn't have those things. And you say, but what about theoretical man? What about the guy who needs to work out just like me? And he doesn't have access to a gym. And maybe he lives in a very dangerous neighborhood. And so that if he tried to go for a jog in that neighborhood, he'd get mugged. Theoretical men are very fascinating. And one of the easiest ways to hide from the responsibilities we have to act on what we know is by conjuring up all sorts of fascinating hypothetical questions about theoretical people who don't know what we know, who don't have access to what we have to have, have, ac have access to. What about theoretical man? And if I can't come up with an answer for what happens to theoretical man, 
who's in a completely different situation than me, well, I don't have to act on what I know. And here's what I want to say to you. There are a lot of people in this world, theoretical and real, who don't know what you know, who don't have what you have, and who are wrestling with some problems that you don't know the solution for. There are a lot of theoretical people who have questions about their own lives and questions about your life that you will never be able to give them satisfactory answers for. Those things, as important as they may be in a separate context, have nothing to do with the responsibility that you have to do what is best for you, given what you know. Please don't allow other people's doubts, other people's struggles to become an excuse for you to neglect what opportunities and options are in front of you. If you want to help other people, by all means, help them. And one of the first steps to being able to do that, to help struggling people, is to not add unnecessarily to their number by making your life difficult beyond what is required by failing to act on your own opportunities. Be successful in your own life. Be as successful and as smart and as healthy as you can possibly be. Then turn around and help other people as much as you possibly can. But there's always a theoretical man somewhere. There's always a theoretical man with a tough question somewhere. And you don't have time to answer them all. You're never going to answer the last question. But you know what question you can't answer every single time? What are you going to do with what you already know? What are you going to do with the opportunity that's standing in front of you right now? What are you going to do with the possibilities that are knocking on your door? Worry about those. Then you can get to theoretical man afterwards. That's TK's two cents. Thanks for listening, y'all. I really appreciate it. If there is anything you'd like to hear me talk about, if there are any thoughts you'd like to share of your own, don't hesitate to put them in the comments. If you're listening on the podcast, please be sure to subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button. And thank you for listening to TK's Two Cents. Feel free to share this with a family member or a friend that might benefit from listening as well. And hey, fight through the temptation, y'all. Fight through the things that are holding you back. There's an old saying, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Go through it. Peace out, y'all. See you on the other side.